Dawn Bennett certainly had the credentials to manage money for the 1%. I think she's very smart. She was number five on Barron's list of top 100 women financial advisors. And good morning. This is Dawn Bennett with Financial Myth Busting. And boy, do we have a tremendous show today. She had a weekly radio show where she dashed out money advice with a helping of politics. Trump can't save America from the next economic crisis. And she even branched out into fashion. I find that, you know, the imperial dragon is a very powerful symbol. Vogue TV featured Dawn's designer jeans adorned with Chinese dragons. And I thought I might as well start my line off with something that meant good luck, good fortune. That good fortune appeared to rain down on Dawn. She leased a $500,000 luxury skybox at the AT&T Stadium to watch the Dallas Cowboys. Her closet was filled with designer shoes. But did she really earn all the money, or was she bilking her unknowing clients? Maybe there were clues in the kitchen of her swanky penthouse condo. I didn't know she had cow tongues in her refrigerator. You heard right. Cow tongues. Dozens of them jammed into jars. Where do you even buy a cow tongue? I don't know. Why would this elegant and seemingly successful woman fill her fridge with cow tongues? Well, as you're about to learn, authorities say those tongues hold the key to her alleged fraud. I've never had somebody do a voodoo doll of me. TV host Steve Santagati was one of Dawn's clients. She was very buttoned up, she seemed very conservative, and she bragged about her successes with finances. He says he became a millionaire from TV hosting gigs, modeling, and writing books. I had over a million, there was one point where I, you know, I had $1.5 million. I didn't even know what $1.5 million of anything even looked like. Steve says after an appearance on a morning show to promote his new dating advice book, The Manual, he had a chance meeting backstage with Dawn and hired her on the spot to manage his money. So I figured, well, I, maybe I'll have someone manage this for me. Steve claims Dawn managed him right into poverty. I, I went from living on the view to living in a van down by the river. This is the van he called home. Steve says he parked it behind a fried chicken shack in Cocoa Beach, Florida. My friends couldn't believe it. They're like, you're living in a van, Mr. Hollywood, Mr. I'm on The View, Mr. I'm on Oprah, Mr. New York Times. So what did Dawn allegedly do to shrink Steve's fortune from seven figures to nothing? She had me in very risk, high, high risk, very volatile and, and very uh, huge downside investments. I'd open up a, a statement that was two months old and I'd see like a $200,000 drop. And then Don would get on the phone and say, you're up in the market compared to the S&P 500 and all this other stuff. I'm like, how am I up? And I see the stock market's going through the roof. I'm like, wait a minute, how is everybody making money? And I'm losing hundreds of thousands of dollars because they weren't small incremental drops. Attorney Tucker Veach claims Dawn was using Steve's and other clients' money to fuel her high-end life. And it ended up being a classic Ponzi scheme. Basically, it's like Bernie Madoff. According to a civil lawsuit filed by the SEC, Dawn allegedly hoodwinked at least 46 investors in what the feds call a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. Money comes in, I use the money for other things and or overexpend, and then I start paying people back with the money that is coming in from other investors. And so there were some people who got money back, but it was coming from other people and nobody knew that. And when they get a warrant to search Dawn's penthouse in Chevy Chase, Maryland, they come across some of the strangest and smelliest evidence they've ever seen. Right there in Dawn's refrigerator, inside those jars, cow tongues. And on the lid of the jars, initials. Those were somehow representative of the SEC attorneys that were bringing the cases against her. According to the search warrant, those were the initials of the SEC's lawyers so she could put them under what she called a hoodoo spell, sort of like voodoo. The warrant says she invoked the hex in hopes of paranormally silencing the SEC attorneys investigating. They say they found a handwritten note saying, I cross and cover you. Come under my command. I command you to hold your tongue. And the tongue is to cut their tongue out so they, they couldn't talk against her or couldn't speak against her. It certainly didn't prevent them from finding evidence. Court documents claim Dawn promised sky-high returns, as outlined in numerous emails they seized. The feds claim Dawn tried to persuade an elderly man with an ailing wife to invest his entire life savings and promised him a guaranteed rate of return of 15% without risk. The man declined, 
telling Dawn it would be a killer if for any reason an investment in your fine company would lead to any more losses. The feds arrested Dawn and charged her with wire fraud, bank fraud, and making false statements on a loan application. She pleaded not guilty and denies defrauding investors. Crime Watch Daily reached out to Dawn's attorney for comment, but all he would say is that this is a pending matter. Even though Steve is not the, the little old lady, um, his portfolio was probably the most egregious that I'd ever seen. Steve claims while he lost money, he's not one of those people caught up in the alleged Ponzi scheme. You want to know what's the difference between what she lost through genuine investing, bad decisions, and what she purposely defrauded me out of for high commissions? Follow the money. Who made money under those circumstances? It wasn't me. So Steve and his attorney took Dawn to arbitration, and he won the case. We got $1,040,000, over a million dollar settlement. Almost everything we were asking. Steve says he's learned his lesson the hard way, and he has this parting advice for anyone with some extra cash. I don't know how long I'll be on the planet, so enjoy your money, spend it, go do things.